Okay, jumping right back in where we left off up here at this roof structure. We're going to jump over here to our drawing, our final deliverable. Now one thing I, I developed or changed between the, um, the elevations and this drawing is now we're starting to look at construction. And construction wise, you're probably going to be measuring to the subfloor because that's where the, uh, the carpenter is going to be measuring his stud heights and all that sort of thing. So here I'm showing the bottom of that soffit that roof soffit as eight feet six above the subfloor. So keep that in mind. That's actually going to lower what we've drawn from our building section a little bit. So if I take a line out from my subfloor and I offset eight feet six, there's going to be a three quarter inch discrepancy there. Now that often happens when you go from design development or, or even schematic design to design development to construction documentation drawings. You're going to be developing these with further detail and you may find things have changed. And if that is the case, you may have to go back to another drawing and fix that, change that. So if we found out that, oh, you know what, I actually want to set my uh, height of this from my subfloor instead of my finished floor, I might want to go back and update that in my elevations so I actually see what I'm going to be um, building. Now in this case we don't have to do that, but for now we are going to move this down three quarters of an inch. So I can delete my layout line. So now this structure is in the right place. I'm also going to double check just again. In plan I was showing 8.5 inches from the interior face of my wall so that's this line here and then I was doing a three foot four offset from there for the overhang now again or sorry a one foot four roof overhang so offset one foot four okay so that's that's exactly where it wants to be now another thing that you could say is instead of showing a one foot four offset from the face of the exterior wall which again is not actually a straight line you could just as easily measure that from the face of the stud to be one foot six and a half and that is that the dimension that you would provide you know let's say the carpenter because as they're framing this that tells them how much they have to subtract from the subfascia and the or the finished fascia and the subfascia to get back to the to the uh, roof joist and that's what they're going to be building all at the same time this wall and that roof joist and then the subfascia anyway let's get started back in here so let's look at our drawing again we are showing from subfloor nine foot one to the top plate and again eight foot six so we've already got that to the bottom of our fascia so nine foot one to our top plate so I'm going to offset that line again, nine foot one, and there's our top plate. Now why draw again when you can copy? So I'm just going to copy these three lines straight up to that top plate, and it's a double top plate. So now I can delete that, and I can extend. Actually, I'm going to draw this line in, trim my cavity lines up to there and match properties, make that green. This line here for now I'm going to trim somewhere out here. My sheathing is going to go all the way up to the top of my top plate. Draw this line in, draw that line in. So there's my top plate. My roof system I generally show that from the top of my fascia. So let's let's actually start out here from my fascia. So I'm going to draw a three quarter inch fascia, finished fascia, and that's going to go down eight inches. So there, there's that. That's already drawn. Then for my roof surface, you know, depending upon the type of material that you're using, in this case we're using standing seam metal roof, I'm just going to call that a quarter of an inch thick. 
Now the actual material is going to be much thinner than that, but once you get it in place, uh, you know, a quarter inch works. So we're just going to do that for now. I know I have plenty of room for that. Now, whether or not my roof surface is actually, you know, at the bottom of this quarter inch, or at the top of this quarter inch, it's not really going to matter for the aesthetics of the house. So that's not a major dimension to worry about. So quarter inch offset there. So that is the top of our sheathing offset, five eighths of an inch for that. And then five and a half inches for our roof joist. So there's our roof joist coming down. I'm going to offset 1.5 inches for our subfascia. And what I'll generally do is I'll use that bottom quarter inch line there to create the subfascia. So there might be a little bit of offset here, but that's fine between the fascia and the subfascia. Top of our joist gets cut back to here. And our subfascia is a 2 by 8, so that's 7.25 inches long, 7 and a quarter. So there's the bottom of my subfascia. I can trim back again my rafter to my subfascia, trim that back to there. My soffit is half inch material. I haven't actually defined what that is in this drawing, but it could be half inches of plywood, it could be uh, half inch of plywood with a uh, aluminum. Uh, cladding. I'm just going to bring that over to here for now. It could be many different things. It could be vinyl soffit, but for now we're just going to show it a half inch. That creates this nice little reveal here, so it hides that hides that joint behind the fascia. Let's see, what did I do for this? Yeah, that's that's all cavity. That's correct. So uh, this is the bottom of my cavity. So let's get some line weights in here. Green. That's green, and this is green. That means this can be yellow. And this can be yellow. This can go up there. And we can do cyan all the way around our cut line. Now for now, I'm just going to get rid of this one, that, that lap siding. Now this soffit needs to be framed with something. Typically that's just framed with 2x4, so we're going to offset 3.5 inches. And I'm going to show that as if it's behind my my rafter, so I'm going to trim that to here, so I see my rafter in front, and then my 2 by framing goes behind. That 2 by framing, let's see here, your sheathing will go all the way up. So you're going to build this wall, right? You're going to tilt, you're going to build it flat on the deck, you're going to tilt it up in place, and the sheathing will already, sometimes already be attached, or you'll put the sheathing on next. Then, you know, the second floor will be installed, and then they'll come back and they'll build this this roof overhang. So they'll put that on. They'll frame this this sorry not overhang, but they'll frame the roof, and then they'll put in the continuous insulation. So the continuous insulation comes up to the bottom of the rafter. Now you're going to say, well, your rafter is overlapping. Your top plate that's perfectly fine because what they're going to do is they are going to come in and notch this corner out of that rafter and we call that a bird's mouth seat cut so i can trim to those two lines that little seat cut now again this rafter we're not actually going to see cut we're going to see it in elevation so that gets the lightest of our lines same thing with this framing here now that framing for our uh, soffit is going to be three and a half inches, let's see, uh, two, by, two by four, so that's three and a half by one and a half, so offset one and a half from, from our sheathing, or sorry, our rigid insulation. So this can come back here, that'll end there, and then 
that can get trimmed down to there and trimmed up to there. There's the end of our cavity. Our cavity would end there, so that means this line is in elevation. Our furring would stop. Now, depends upon exactly how the builder wants to build all this. What you know, what comes first, what comes next, when they get to certain things. But for now, we'll show our three-quarter inch furring stopping at the bottom of that. I, I imagine they'd probably do this soffit framing and this furring at probably close to the same time. Okay, we don't need this line anymore. And what I'm simply going to do is I'm going to explode this and I'm just going to fudge it a little by extending it up to that line. Again, for the purposes of this drawing, we're not too concerned with the exact exposure of each of these pieces. And that's going to come over to there and then I'm going to draw in that piece there. Actually, what makes more sense is for that to come down and this to come over. I think they would do that soffit and then do the furring. Again, exactly how that gets done, the builder will figure out. It's all about the order of operations. So I'm going to paint that on there. Again, this is the edge of my cavity, so that's green. This becomes the edge of my cavity down to there, so that gets green. And then same thing here. So I'm going to show this, because this is basically open space within the cut. Draw this line up to there. And actually this becomes cavity, so that goes away. Green. Oh, and this actually becomes elevation here. So now we can match properties, green, green, green. We can get rid of that and do that with one green line. Don't forget your hatch in our two by eight. Match properties from a red line. There we go, looking pretty good.